very good day to you and welcome to the program. Today we want to give you a lesson in farming. We want to teach you how to plow. Wouldn't you love to know how to plow? Well, if you look at Luke chapter 9 verse 62 in the New King James Version, the Word of God says, But Jesus said to him, No man or no one, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Why did Jesus say that? He said that, my dear friend, because there's no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. That's why I love God so much. When God forgives, He forgets. And I always say with my tongue in my cheek that God has got a bad memory. Because when He forgives, He forgets. And when you say, Lord, remember that thing I did last week? He says, no, I don't remember. Isn't that beautiful? So if you've done something wrong, ask God to forgive you and then press on and don't look behind you. Now with plowing, if you're going into a plowing competition, and I hope there's a few plowmen watching this and please don't be too hard on me. I'm just giving the rough outline. I've done a lot of plowing, plenty, but not for the last few years. First thing you've got to do is get a proper tractor, okay? Then it's got to be able to pull this plow, normally a three, four foot of plow. You've got to set your plow with a top link, which is just behind the tractor, behind the seat, so that the first shoe that turns the soil and the last shoe are level, okay? So you normally put your tractor in the ground, pull it for a bit, see which one is up or down, tighten it, release it until it's perfect. Then you clamp it so it doesn't move. So now your, your furrows are going to be dead level. Then you put your plow in the field, at the one side of the field, okay? And you look for a point on the horizon. Maybe it's a church steeple. Maybe it's a building. Maybe it's a big tree. Normally there's a silver arrow which is mounted on the top of the bonnet of your tractor. You take a line from that silver arrow and you look at that object on the horizon, whether it be a tree, a rock, a church steeple, and you keep your eye focused on that point. Now your first furrow is the most important one. If you cut that first furrow and it's wrong, the whole field is going to be a mess. It's absolutely vital that that first furrow is exactly dead straight. So by faith, See, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not yet seen. By faith, you put your plow in the ground. Okay? You put your tractor in gear. You've normally got your accelerator on the, on the, the column, the steering column. You set it on the right revs, and then you take your foot off a clutch, and you start plowing. And away you go. Halfway down the field... The devil, the accuser of the brethren, the liar, he says to you, the plow is out of the ground. Now, if you don't listen to the devil, you've got no problem. If you listen to the lies of the devil and you start to doubt yourself, you've got the steering wheel, okay, you're holding it dead straight, you look behind you. What do you do as you turn around? You turn the steering wheel just ever so slightly and you put a kink in your first furrow. When you get to the other side of the field, you stop, you turn around, and you put the front wheel in the furrow that you've just plowed. And if you're a good plowman, you shouldn't have to do anything because that, that wheel will direct where you're going. But the problem is when you get to that little kink, it throws the plow and it gets bigger. By the time you've finished, you've got a snake in your field and it looks ugly. Don't look behind you. That's the answer. Move forward. Jesus knew that, and he told that to the people. There's no condemnation for those in Christ. Goodbye. We trust that you have been blessed by today's message. For more information, please visit angusbucken.com.